Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today, as many of you know, Apple held their annual Worldwide Developers Conference and they revealed iOS 7 to the general public. Now, in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys an in-depth look at iOS 7 Beta 1 running here on my iPhone 4S. I haven't yet installed it on my iPhone 5, simply because I don't want to update past 6.1.2, causing me to lose my untethered jailbreak. And oftentimes, betas are extremely buggy. However, this time I've yet to really notice anything. So first of all, let's just start off by saying that iOS 7 looks completely different than past versions of iOS. As you can see, they were really trying to go for a crisp and flat look. So all of the icons have been redesigned, including the dock, and now when you're at the home screen, the icons actually move depending on which orientation you're holding your device in. So let me just go ahead and try to move the iPhone around a little bit, and you might not really be able to pick it up on camera, but the icons actually are moving accordingly. So it's just a very minor shift when I actually move the phone, the icons aren't moving substantially. And as you just saw, there's a really flat notification letting me know that I only have 20% battery remaining. And now let's take a look at the new interface. So to do that, I'm just going to launch a couple of applications and show you guys. Again, I'm not really going to go too into depth on each of these apps. I'm just going to load them up and show you guys what it looks like. And also, as I'm loading them and closing them, you will notice new animations. And I think these animations are superior, especially in comparison to the previous animations. So let me go ahead and just hit the home button again and we'll go into the camera now. And while we're in the camera app, I wanted to show you guys another key thing of iOS 7. So as you can see down here at the bottom, right above the button to actually take the picture, you'll notice you have a few different options. So by default, you have photo. When you swipe over to the left, it switches to video mode and then you can continue swiping and you get a square mode and you have another fourth and final mode, which is for the panorama camera portion of the camera app. And then obviously you can easily access your camera roll just down there at the left. And then from here you can do things that you'd normally be able to do with past versions of iOS, such as iOS 6, you can delete it, you can even edit it. And this is where things really get cool because you have a new photo filters option in the middle here. Let me just select that. And as you can see, I have different options that I can set the photo to. Again, this doesn't really work that well because this is a space scale. So let me go ahead and go to this image here and we can edit this and I'll show you guys So we have a few different options here And of course it does update live and you can preview it before you actually hit apply or you can hit cancel All right next up We have the weather app which I find really clean and definitely superior to past versions of the weather app So as you can see right here I just have my default city set to LA and we can scroll out just by pinching out and we have an overview of all of our different cities that we have again very nice very very clean and if we want to reorder them we can easily do so or we can tap into it to get more information and we have a hourly forecast down below the current forecast and we also have a forecast for the remainder of the week so exiting out of the weather application here let's go into the clock app and again throughout this entire demonstration you guys will really notice the clean and flat look that iOS is starting to adopt with iOS 7 you can even tell up in the top bar here you have a white and black theme going on it almost looks like it's inverted. Now let's look at the Maps app. All right, so here you have an overall gray theme, and when I start to zoom in, it will give me a brief scale over here in the top left-hand corner that will slowly fade away, and it just kind of gives you an idea of what you're looking at and exactly how much you're looking at. And if you want to go into full screen, all you have to do is simply tap once, and the bars disappear for a really clean view. And you can simply tap again, and the bars will reappear. All right, and in the Videos app, again, you get pretty much the same thing. Notes also looks very clean and Apple has clearly gone away with the yellow notepad themed notes app that they had previously. And again, I hope you guys are kind of starting to get the feel for this and actually just using it right now. It definitely feels different than past versions of iOS and it doesn't feel like something that I'm used to. And now here's Game Center. It definitely has an interesting and more whimsical interface with these sort of bubbles here that you can navigate through different portions of Game Center. So for instance, if I tap on the Games bubble, all of them will fly off to the sides and I'll be taken directly to the Games tab down here at the bottom and it will load up different games as well as suggestions. I'm not going to wait for it though, so let's hit the home button and we also have passbook and loading passbook up and in the background you might not be able to notice it but it actually has the wallpaper that I have set and that's another key thing that Apple is trying to do with iOS 7 is to add this sort of translucent feel to iOS so that it comes across as more customized in these different menus and you'll notice that even the keyboard almost has a translucent feel to it when you're typing in some of the menus and also the interface in general and I'll show you that more when I actually go in 
into Notification Center as well as Control Center. All right, and just exiting out of the iTunes Store app, let's go into the App Store app. And now, yet again, we have a new interface. And down below at the bottom, we have something else. We have a new tab that's called Near Me that will allow you to view different popular applications that individuals use near you. So one great example is if you're at a tourist attraction, sometimes they will have specific apps tailored for that attraction, and you'll be able to discover those apps simply by going to the Near Me tab. All right, and exiting out of the App Store, again, we have settings which looks completely different. We definitely have a more flat design, and it almost reminds me of a Metro type interface. All right, now, inside of the phone app, you'll notice we have a completely revised dialer yet again, and let's exit out back to the home screen, and we'll go inside of Safari this time. Now, Safari has definitely been improved, and it's easier to view more of what you're looking at. So, for instance, we have the top navigation bar, and we also have the bottom navigation bar. However, when I start to scroll, you'll notice that both bars subside, and I simply have a narrower top bar that just tells me which site I'm on. However, I can easily gain access to those nav bars again. Also, tabs have been revised, so they look significantly different than before, and you can have an unlimited limited number of tabs as well. And now let's take a look at the music app and the new iTunes radio portion of the music app. So you can add new radio stations down here at the bottom and it's definitely similar to Pandora or Slacker radio in the sense that you can add stations, you can somewhat customize them, you can say whether or not you like the song or you dislike the song and then from there it will continue to make suggestions and it'll also learn based on what you like. So now we have a new song and we have the option to buy it if we choose so we can listen to it whenever we want. So this new iTunes radio feature doesn't let you listen to any song like Spotify, for instance. However, again, once you find a song that you like, you can hit the star button and it'll start to personalize your radio experience. And just like any other music application, you can play it and access it in the background. So now I'm playing the song and I can skip to the next song or control the volume towards the bottom there. All right, and going over to the right, let's take a look at the new and revised folders. So as you can see, it's definitely more clean and I definitely definitely prefer this folder look. Also, folders now has pages, so you can have an unlimited number of applications inside of a folder, at least that's what Apple was saying. So hundreds of applications now inside of folders with pages. And now taking a quick look at Notification Center, again, this has also been revamped, and you'll notice, like I was saying earlier, it's somewhat transparent, so you get a personalized experience depending on your background. So the colors in the back will change based on whatever you have in the background, and you get an overview of all of the different notifications you have for today. You can view all notifications or simply your missed notifications. So now Notification Center has three different tabs, and you can even view notifications on the lock screen. So let me just lock it here and as you can see we now have notification center another thing that i'll access here on the lock screen is control center which you guys saw me bring up earlier for itunes radio this gives you access to various settings as you can see at the top we have toggles for airplane mode wi-fi bluetooth do not disturb and auto rotate we also have screen brightness adjustment we have the music player below that with all of the different options, and then we can enable the flashlight portion. So as you can see, the LED light turned on when I press that button. And to the right of that, we have clocks, calendar, and camera. So we can access any of those settings from wherever we are simply by swiping up. And we still have the familiar camera button down below in the bottom right, and we can swipe it up to access the camera, or we can simply swipe over to unlock the device. So we have a completely revamped lock screen in iOS 7. And another thing I wanted to show you guys is a revised version of Siri. Now, Apple did say that they have updated Siri's voice to a more high definition version. However, as of now, now I can't really distinguish the difference between Siri and iOS 7 and iOS 6. Maybe that's because Apple hasn't included the high definition version of Siri's voice yet in iOS 7. I don't quite know, but you guys will notice that Siri does have added functionality, such as the ability to actually control different toggles and settings. And you guys will see that once I activate Siri and ask her to turn up the brightness. Turn up the brightness. As you can see, Siri did slightly increase the brightness and now I have a new brightness slider. And if I simply tap on settings, it will bring me over to the brightness portion of the settings app. And now let's go ahead and do another one. Enable Bluetooth. Okay, I turned on Bluetooth. All right, and I've done this before. For some reason, it doesn't actually update the toggle version of Bluetooth, but as you can see, once I toggle it on, then it will enable Bluetooth, or I can disable it again. Another cool thing that Siri can now do is bring up images. 
Give me images of Google Glass. Here is what I found. So as you can see, it does a live image search in Bing and it will bring back the results. And actually, that was a great time to end this video because apparently it just died even though it had 10% battery left. So that's another interesting thing to notice. I guess in the beta version, it turns the device off ahead of draining the battery entirely. So I hope you guys liked this video. Again, this was a first look at iOS 7. If you did, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section to be entered into my new Amazon $100 gift card giveaway. And don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter to be updated more often. Until next time, this is ICU signing out.